You see it everywhere. On car commercials, engine badges, lawn mowers, motorcycles, even vacuum cleaners. Horsepower. It sounds powerful, mechanical, and oddly ancient. But have you ever stopped to wonder what horsepower actually is? Why do we still measure modern machines built with computers, turbines, and electric motors using a unit named after a horse? Was it just clever marketing or does it actually mean something precise? And more importantly, when someone says an engine makes 300 horsepower, what is it really doing? Today, we're pulling back the curtain on one of the most famous measurements in engineering history to answer a deceptively simple question. What exactly is horsepower? Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Horsepower began not in a laboratory, but in the gritty, smoke-filled world of the Industrial Revolution. In the late 1700s, steam engines were beginning to replace horses in mines, mills, and factories. But people didn't think in watts or joules back then. They thought in horses. If you wanted to sell a steam engine, you had to explain how many horses it could replace. Enter James Watt, the Scottish engineer, whose name would later become a unit of power itself. Watt needed a way to compare the output of his steam engines to the work done by draft horses, so he observed horses at work, specifically horses turning large mill wheels. Based on these observations, he estimated that a typical horse could pull with a force of about 180 pounds while walking at roughly 2.5 miles per hour. From this, he calculated that one horse could do about 33,000 foot-pounds of work per minute. And just like that, horsepower was born. So what does that number actually mean? A foot-pound is a unit of work. It describes moving one pound a distance of one foot. When you multiply that by time, you get power. One horsepower, by Watt's definition, is the ability to move 33,000 pounds one foot in one minute or 550 foot-pounds per second. That's it. Horsepower is not about speed alone or strength alone. It's about how quickly work gets done. This distinction matters because power is often confused with force. A very strong machine that moves slowly might not produce much horsepower, while a smaller machine that moves quickly could produce a lot. Horsepower measures the rate at which work is performed, not just the raw effort involved. As engineering evolved, horsepower became a standardized way to describe engine output. In the metric world, power is measured in watts, and one mechanical horsepower equals about 746 watts. That means a 100 horsepower engine produces roughly 74,600 watts of power. Interestingly, a real horse can actually produce more than one horsepower, but only for short bursts. Studies have shown that a horse can briefly generate 10 to 15 horsepower when sprinting, but over long periods, one horsepower is a reasonable average. In other words, James Watt didn't underestimate horses. He standardized them. His definition wasn't about peak performance. It was about sustained, practical work. When we talk about engines today, horsepower is usually tied to rotation. Car engines don't lift weights or pull carts. They spin crankshafts. That's where torque enters the conversation. Torque is a twisting force measured in pound-feet or newton meters, and horsepower is calculated from torque and engine speed. In simple terms, horsepower tells you how fast an engine can apply torque over time. That's why an engine with high torque but low RPM can feel strong but slow, while an engine with lower torque but very high RPM can still make impressive horsepower. The famous equation connects them. Horsepower equals torque multiplied by RPM divided by a constant. This relationship explains why horsepower curves rise as engines rev higher, even when torque begins to fall. 
Different industries also define horsepower slightly differently. Mechanical horsepower is the original unit used for engines. Electrical horsepower is used for electric motors and equals exactly 746 watts. Metric horsepower, often used in Europe and Japan, is slightly lower at about 735.5 watts. Then there's brake horsepower, which measures engine output before losses from transmissions and accessories. By the time power reaches the wheels, it's lower, known as wheel horsepower. This is why manufacturers' numbers and dyno test results don't always match. Horsepower isn't lying. It's just being measured at different points. In everyday life, horsepower helps us compare machines quickly. A typical family car might have 150 to 250 horsepower. A high-performance sports car could exceed 600 horsepower. A commercial jet engine produces tens of thousands of horsepower when converted from thrust power. Even humans generate horsepower, though not much. A healthy adult can sustain about 0.1 to 0.2 horsepower, maybe 0.3 during intense cycling. It takes about 10 people pedaling hard to equal one horse working steadily. Suddenly, the name makes a lot more sense. Despite being centuries old, horsepower has survived because it's intuitive. It translates complex physics into something people can picture. You may not visualize 200 kilowatts, but you can imagine 200 horses pulling together. That mental image, powerful, coordinated, relentless, still resonates today. And while engineers may prefer watts, horsepower remains a cultural bridge between the animal-powered past and the machine-driven present. So the next time you hear someone brag about horsepower, remember what it truly represents. It's not just a number on a spec sheet. It's a historical snapshot, a clever comparison, and a precise measurement of how fast work gets done. From steam engines to supercars, from horses to electrons, horsepower continues to remind us that even the most advanced technology often stands on surprisingly old ideas. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.